everyone, Miltman234 here, and welcome to another episode of Forgotten Media, where I dig up some stuff you may or may not have heard of. When it comes to old Disney games on the PC, the ones that I normally think of are those old point-and-click games made by good old Disney Interactive. From what I can remember, the games that I played on PC were made during the late 90s and early 2000s. There were games that were a collection of mini-games, like Topsy Turvy, based off of Hunchback of Notre Dame. Man, I used to play that game all the time when I was young. And then there were some of those Disney animated storybooks. Games that retold the film's plot while you get to interact with the story, setting, and play games. One of my favorite ones that I played a lot was Toy Story's animated storybook. Ah, brings back so many memories. Of course, there were other games that were more action-packed or simple point-and-click puzzle games. There are so many of them that it would take me forever to play through some of the lesser-known ones, let alone make a marathon video about them. So today we're only going to be looking at one game, which I consider to be a bit of an underrated gem. Disney's Villain's Revenge. This was an old PC game that was released somewhere around 1999. When I first saw this at an office match when I was really young, I was a bit creeped out because I found the cover to be a bit scary. So as the years went on, I always wondered what that game was all about, and I eventually got it off on eBay to try it out. One thing that I found weird at first was that it came with two discs, and you need both of them to play the full game. I guess one disc was too much to carry all that data back then. I've heard something about you have to swap the discs in order to continue from a certain point, but when I played it on an old PC, which I no longer have, it didn't work. But since it was one of those models that had two disc containers, I just popped both of them in and it worked just fine. But with technical difficulties out of the way, let's look at the game itself. The story of the game is that Jiminy Cricket reads to you stories from a book that includes Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, and Dumbo. But he soon grows tired of it, since he's read them so many times and decides to cut to the chase, and tears out all the endings to the stories. So in other words, you click on one of the pages and he tells you which ending to which story it is. After a crazy cutscene where the book starts floating around and the villains from the stories try to snag the pages, the Blue Fairy informs Jiminy that the book is actually a magical storybook. Now that he's ripped out the happy endings, the villains are reshaping the stories the way they want it to end. So in order to fix this, you and Jiminy will have to go inside the stories, defeat the villains, and rescue the heroes before putting the pages back in. For our villain roll call, we have Captain Hook from Peter Pan, the Evil Queen from Snow White, the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland, and the Ringmaster from Dumbo? Yeah, I do find it odd that they featured a character that's not considered an official Disney villain. Some people have made some arguments that he is a villain or a semi-villain, but to me, I don't count him in being an actual villain. In fact, the movie Dumbo didn't really have a villain. The worlds inside the storybook contain a game that you must complete in order to fix the story. In Snow White's world, the evil queen has erased Snow White's prince from existence, so that he can't save her from eternal slumber. So you'll have to use the Queen's potions in order to make a true love potion to make Snow White's prince appear. But while you're doing this, the Queen is putting the seven dwarfs to sleep with her poison apples. So there's a time limit where you have to make the right potion in time before all seven dwarfs kick the bucket. There is a humorous part of the game where if you mix up the ingredients wrong, then you get Cinderella's Prince Charming instead of Snow White's. And that doesn't really help because all he does is just try to fit the glass slipper under her foot and doesn't really kiss her. But it does make you wonder, if you do succeed in making the true love potion while the dwarves are still asleep, then does that mean the prince has to go down and kiss them as well? For Dumbo's world, Dumbo is forced to do his high diving act to keep the audience of villains entertained, and the goal to this segment is to create a diversion so that Dumbo has enough time to fly away. You have to move things and change the position of some objects around and whack the clown next to Dumbo off the building in order to make it work. It's kind of like Mousetrap, you set up the pieces and watch the show. It's also very easy to put together once you get the pattern down. In Wonderland, you have to help a headless Alice find her head, and then find a way out of the Queen's maze by following the White Rabbit. Along the way, you'll have to clear away puffs of smoke, Cheshire Cats, giant pocket watches, and later on distract card guards by painting red roses white. It's fun, but I felt like it dragged on a bit. And finally, in Neverland, Peter Pan is an old man and unable to fight Hook, so you'll have to step into his shoes and have a sword fight against the villainous captain. This is a really fun game where you have a sword fight against Captain Hook while avoiding and attacking his pirate crew. And once you've completed all four stories, the villains all gang up on you and you'll have to use the magic storybook 
to deflect projectiles at them and defeat them once and for all. The opening cutscene is pretty good, and the game itself is a good challenge. Heck, even the music is pretty epic, even though it's very short. But yeah, it's a good final battle for a point-and-click game. And just when you thought it was all over, a blue fairy awards you with four bonus minigames based off of the worlds from the storybook. There's Clown Fever, where you can either make Bumpy the Clown dance in freestyle mode, or play a memory game. In Wonderland Maze, you have to help a caterpillar navigate through a maze. What makes it challenging is that you have to rotate the two halves of the maze in order to find the right route to reach the exit. Pirate's Blog is a game where you have to match six of your coins in a row, while you or your opponent try to turn the coins into theirs. It also happens to be one of the only mini-games that is actually multiplayer. If you played Reversi, then you'll get the hang of it. I sure didn't because I didn't know much about Reversi back then. And finally, there's the Seven Dwarfs Gold Rush, where you have to lead the Seven Dwarfs to the exit while overcoming obstacles. This is a really fun and lengthy game. It's also neat that the dwarves have their own special abilities to help make their way down in the mines. There are some other mini-games, like helping Jiminy out of a bramble of thorns when you enter Snow White's world, or finding carvings of characters on the Magic Storybook, but other than that, that's about it for Disney's Villain's Revenge. It has a very interesting setup, the voice acting is good, the 2D animation on the characters are well done, and the CGI graphics look amazing for its time. This is a game that Disney fans and fans of the villains can enjoy, and I believe that it deserves a re-release for these current computer models or just release the game onto Steam. Besides, if Humongous Entertainment was able to re-release some of their classic point-and-click games onto Steam, why not do the same to this one? I haven't seen that many walkthroughs of the game on the internet, aside from seeing those very bizarre crossovers like Thomas and Friends crossover with this game. Now that's just weird. It's almost as weird as those Pooh's Adventure series that'll never die. As for finding the actual game, there are some decent prices going for on eBay and whatnot. Just make sure that you have both of the CDs. In closing, Disney's Villain's Revenge is a fun point-and-click game. If you happen to own a copy in one of those older PC models, it's definitely worth a playthrough. Well, that wraps up this episode of Forgotten Media, so this is Melting Man 234 signing out. or may not have heard of. When it comes to making... Nah. What was it? Humorous part. Oh, yeah. There is a humorous part of the game where if you mix up the ingredients wrong, then you get Cinderella... <clears throat> glass slipper onto Snow White's foot instead of kissing her. But it does make you wonder, if you do succeed in making the love the bear. But either way, it's a pretty good final battle for a point-and-click game. Uh, what's it? Yeah, it's a good final very short, but yeah, it's a good sh hmm.